If you've seen Blade Runner 2049, you probably remember this shot. It's beautiful, just like most of the movie. People use this shot to showcase something called water caustics. It's that thing that happens at the bottom of swimming pools. But how did they get them? A while back I tried to get this effect by bouncing light off of water, but it didn't work super well. Someone commented, why not use a mylar sheet? Well in Blade Runner, we know they used real water. And all that got me thinking, is there a best way to get this water caustics effect? There's three main ways to do it. Bouncing light off of a mylar sheet. Bouncing off water, which they did for this shot. And shooting through water, which is how they did this shot. We're not just trying to figure out the best looking way, but the easiest way and least expensive way. If it takes thousands of dollars and a week to set up, it might only work for the pros. So without further ado, let's recreate this water caustics effect from Blade Runner 2049. And go. Ugh. We started by moving things out of the way to get a blank wall behind the couch. This is where we're putting our water caustics effect. We initially had these LED tubes in shot, but I framed them out in post because I preferred the way it looked without them. Lastly, we added a soft light to the side of me onto our water caustics. Despite this not being how they did it in Blade Runner, this did seem like the easiest way. But what even is mylar? Simply, it's a type of plastic film, making it super thin and light, often very reflective. You may know it better as a space blanket. Oh my frickin' goodness. We set up a small test in my garage to try out each method of doing water caustics ahead of time. This will save us some time for the larger shoot. Our setup was simple, an LED panel above the mylar sheet, and two people on either side angling it towards the backdrop and shaking it. Wow, that's pretty cool. With our test a success, it's time to scale up. We thought we could do something cool with color contrast, but why question Roger Deakins? So we made it monochromatic and it looks a lot better. It's a beautiful effect and it looks like reflections off of water, but not like in Blade Runner. We're not getting those clear ripples. And as such, I believe it'd be better used on faces than backgrounds. And it doesn't really serve as a budget effect. We paid $40 for the Mylar and water is cheap, but maybe it's easier. So let's move on to method two. We need a pretty large container for this one to work. I'm gonna be nice and careful around the stairs. Move carefully around the electricity. Stick the water under our LED panel and nothing. Why? An LED panel has many sources of light. This effectively creates one larger source of light. Generally, the larger the light source, the softer the light, and you can tell it's soft light by the softer shadows. For this effect, we need hard light, like the sun. Because the sun is a small point of light in the sky, it creates hard light, and therefore hard shadows. So we'll use the Amaran 150C, which is a point source light, so it effectively does the same thing. We started by trying to bounce the light off the surface of the water at an angle. It worked okay, but it was difficult to keep the light off the background because it was pointed directly at it. So we have to bring this onto the floor and shoot down into it. We used the Amran Spotlight SE to keep it off the background and on the water only. Focus the spotlight, move the water around, and that looks amazing. Now to apply it to our shot. Let's get this out of the way. It doesn't look quite the same as the shot in Blade Runner. We need to get a bigger container and put it further away from the background in order to get an identical effect. Just not something we can do in my living room. So it's cost effective with an asterisk. But we did get clear ripples and those look great. 
just a little too dark. This was one of the downsides of this effect. It's not very bright when compared to the Mylar. You can brighten the effect by adding something reflective to the container, such as a mirror, but you end up with these clear areas of separation where the mirror stops. Additionally, the water ripples become less obvious this way. So, it's on to method three. This final way is what I feel looks the best. But is it worth the hassle? Rigging water up high can't be easy. Let it go. Whoa, on the ground. Our garage test was limited. We don't have much ceiling space to bring the water up high. But even if we could, the fish tank was so heavy, I had concerns about raising it up. You know, we have to do this again tomorrow at a much greater height. From the little testing we did though, this is gonna look great if we can figure it out. Our first hurdle to overcome was the weight of the fish tank. We needed something lighter. So who's to say we have to fill it up so high? Doing the effect this way, you don't actually need much water. So we could rig it up high somewhat safely. We kept the spotlight on our light and set it up at the top of the stairs to shoot through the water and onto the wall. From our tests, we found that the further the light from the water, the better the effect looked. More in focus, so to speak. But when we tried this, it became clear this wouldn't work. The further our light is from an object, the smaller that object's shadow becomes. For all intents and purposes, we're calling the effect the water's shadow. To make the shadow bigger, we'll need to bring the light closer. But as the light gets closer, the less in focus the effect is, meaning we're not getting clear water ripples. So no matter what we do, we're stuck. We either can't have a big effect, or we can't have a clear effect. And to make matters more complicated, we found that the effect was more in focus without the spotlight, which is confusing because the spotlight makes the light focusable. Admittedly though, I'm not entirely sure how spotlights work. So I was ready to give up. We sought to answer the question of whether or not doing water caustics this way is worth it. So not being able to do them with my resources answers the question. And then a friend of mine did something simple. He pointed a phone flashlight up through the water and I was shocked to see in focus, clear, crisp ripples on the ceiling. Why does a crappy little phone flashlight work? And then it hit me. The phone flashlight is a tiny light source. The spotlight is a larger light source than the bare bulb. And the reason the effect looks better as the light gets further away is because the light source gets smaller relative to the fish tank. Smaller light source. Just like how closing the aperture to your lens makes everything more in focus, so too does making your light source smaller. We set up the fish tank further back, brought the light closer, and used this black tin foil called Cinefoil to make the light source smaller. Three hours later, and we have this. We didn't just settle for these tests alone. We did more shots using these techniques. My conclusion? Shooting through water is a pain. My answer is that it is not worth it. You may be thinking that shooting at a wall at an angle like we did was what made it difficult, but we did this from above too in a different shot, and it wasn't easy then either. The only way I see this being doable is if you plan on building something to suspend the water in the air. Bouncing off water looks great, but the thing to consider is what scenario are you gonna use it in? On anything other than a fairly even surface, the water ripples won't really be obvious. Mylar is simple. And before anyone says anything, we tested Mylar with a point source light too. It added some texture, but not really ripples. So it may not give ripples, but for most scenarios, that's okay. Most importantly, it makes people think of water reflections. Doing some research too, some creators have gotten even more ripple looking results from Mylar. To me, Mylar is what I'm gonna be grabbing 99% of the time. But dang, those water caustics from Blade Runner look amazing.